Welcome to Sunday's Guide video. Sorry, I'm picking the wood chips out of my jumper. <laughs> they didn't come out in the wash. I wore this when I was chiseling wood. Anyway, it's Sunday morning and it's quite early. And does anyone else ever get that lovely silence? But I don't want to be the one to disrupt it. That lovely silence in a neighborhood on a Sunday morning. <laughs> There's like this eerie, don't want to make a noise until like 11 a.m. I don't know. I have two jobs that I would like to do. The first one I'm going to do first because it's not loud. Although the second one isn't loud either. I want to plant my potatoes, but I think I'm going to do them in the bags of compost. I seen Karen shared something. It was like a video where this guy got a bag of compost, sliced one half down the middle, folded it like that. So he had the two things of compost and he just planted, I don't, I don't know what he was planting, but I was like, oh my God, that would be great for potatoes. Potatoes last year, I felt like I was constantly filling them with soil and the bags got extremely heavy and I had to get help lifting the bags to throw the compost. I put it on the flat, the raised beds, so I could take all the potatoes out. So I'm thinking if I do them in the actual compost bags, also potatoes need like a really rich, they take all the nutrients um, so they need lovely rich soil and then once they have flowers they need lots of water so that's what I've learned last year with my, my crop so I think I might just get bags of compost do that trick and stick the potatoes in that way that's what I'm thinking but the, the garden centre doesn't open until 10 so I'm proper early this morning in life so I'm going to use that Algon stuff that I had mentioned last week in last week's video to spray it on the areas where I have algae and see if it works. I need a nice dry day. It's dry and mild today and then I think it gets activated by rain then. So if it rains then during the week, which I think it is, it's been just raining on and off since St. Patrick's Day. This is the first sunny day in a few days so my soul needs it. Also loads more bulbs have opened so I'll go and show you. So those pink muscaries that I planted back in, sorry, I feel like the birds are really loud today. <laughs> um, they have opened. I think there's a couple more to come up. I think if I do them again, I should put them in a smaller pot or maybe add some to this one. If you remember back in November, I planted some crocus in the grass and I kept accidentally standing on them because I didn't realize how many I planted. But just in the past couple of days, loads of them have come up. And when the sun hits them in a little bit, the sun is over here at the moment, they should start opening their petals and hopefully the bees will have a snack on them. Also, I've just noticed this one. I think I have these elsewhere and I had a couple left over and I just popped them in here. But how pretty is that daffodil. I can't remember the variety, but maybe if you look back on the videos from November, I might have the variety name, but that is quite pretty. Now he's hanging his head a little bit, so, and yeah, these ones here are still going strong. I've also noticed as well in the past couple of weeks, there has been new grass growth in the pond. So, the pond last year, I didn't know frogs, <laughs> but I did have lots of little kind of tiny creatures in it and insects and stuff, but um, yeah, no frogs, but there is new growth. So I think in a little bit, I will cut back that grass, but I'll wait until like a little bit more, maybe April. And then yeah, new grass growing through the pond. These brunners are my absolute fave, so I'm just going to zoom back out. This is the one I had last year, I think two years ago now, I planted it, so it's its second season here. And then the ones behind it are the ones that I planted last year, so that I'd have a nice big clump of them. They haven't flowered yet, but this is one of my favourite little plants for springtime because I feel like their little blue flowers last ages and they kind of remind me of forget-me-not. We also have a pigeon serenading us, if you can hear him in the background. These buckets are from two years ago. I didn't do anything with them and they've come back alive. I think I forgot to even feed them. I must actually give them a little bit of feed. But um, yeah, those spring buckets have hyacinths 
and there is tulips and I think maybe some alliums as well, some little ones. All of the spring rolls are starting to come alive. I am so excited. So this bed does have tulips in it, but they haven't. A couple have started to come up, but I know that this bed was later last year. It was kind of like April, May time, but the one over here was earlier. And I think this is all white tulips in it, tulips and bulbs. I'm super excited for this one because this is the one where I put all of the red tulips in it. I didn't have these last year. So I am proper excited to see these when they're all in bloom. This bed has a couple of tulips. Can't remember what I put down there. I do think I put late flowering daffodils, similar to the ones that's over there. So I'm not actually sure. It'll be a surprise when they come up. Okay, so this is the product that I'm using. I don't know if my camera can pick up the text on it, but it just says two, so three parts water to one part algon. And it says that it will start to clear the surface within a week or so and stay actively clean and progressively for months afterwards. It may take two weeks for results to show. Do not rinse. It is a gentle and progressive process. Okay. So I've just sprayed a couple of the areas. I emptied the whole um, thing into the pot, but I actually only used this much. So that wasn't very smart of me, but I've done just some areas in the front off camera and the beds, because the main thing is I would love to stain these beds in the same tone as the greenhouse, but I need to get as much as I can of that algae off because obviously stain is not gonna stick to the algae. So hopefully, maybe next month, um, I could give them a stain once the weather is a bit drier and there is less moisture in the air. But let's see how these go. As you can see, like these ones, very green, very green. Maybe I should just paint them green. Maybe that might be the solution. But that product smells really vinegary. So I imagine I get the vibe, it might just be like vinegar and something else because uh, there doesn't seem to be any other kind of chemicals in it. I should probably read the thing on the back, but it does smell very vinegary. I've also just noticed, I don't know if my camera can pick them up, see if I can zoom in a bit more, but this tree looks like it is about to, well it's too early to flower, but the buds are ready to burst open when the time is right. I'm also raging I didn't leave my camera running because um, when I walked back in from being in the front there was a robin just chilling on the microphone and I was like oh if I had left my camera running um, he might come back though he kind of darts in and out sees where I am but that would have been a fun shot to get him chirping chirping in the microphone I better check and make sure he didn't poop on my microphone There's actually instructions 
on the back of this particular compost. I got a peat-free. It was the only peat-free one that was actually in Woody's. I know B&Q have their own version of peat-free compost as well, but this one is peat-free and it's for vegetables and it does say perfect potato bags. So I was like, I'll get three of them. So there's instruction on the back. Now with potatoes, I'm gonna take the seed and put my hand right into the very bottom and um, because they do grow up and then you're supposed to cover the new growth with um, more soil the bag did say to take some of the compost out put your seeds in and then as they grow up but I'm just going to bury these bad boys to the very end and then let them grow up I'm going to just cut a few holes in the bottom and um, just for as I say storage drainage and potato seeds. Myself and Karen went halves on a bag because we got Mars Pipers and there's so many in a bag and um, so last year I had loads of potatoes I had too many you can never have too many really and um, I gave so many away so we went halves on a bag of Mars Piper first 30s so Karen kindly chitted the potatoes so the chits are these and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these small little chits and I'm just gonna leave one big chit so for example this one I'm gonna take the side ones off top one yeah and I'm just gonna leave one actually I'll take that one off as well and I'm gonna leave one little nobble nobble knob no <laughs> not knob <laughs> little nugget chit on top and um, so if you want to do it this way, you can totally do this. Potatoes are hungry plants. Um, you can obviously use your own compost as well and grow bags. I do have some grow bags from last year, but I need to clean them. Um, but yeah, this is a fun way if you want to do it with me this way. That's all I got up to this week. I'm actually heading away for a couple of days. So I need to sort my seedlings out. I was like, girl, you've got seedlings on the window and you're planning to leave them for a few days, but they'll be fine. Um, I'm just gonna make sure the soil is moist. I might take them away from the windowsill and put them on the kitchen table. So they're still getting light, but they're not getting baked out of it with the sun. So yeah, let me know if you are gonna do potatoes this year. Try and like split a bag with your friends. I think last year I was a bit overwhelmed because <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I had six bags, I think, of potatoes. And I found them really heavy and stuff to kind of lift, whereas those ones seem to be a bit more manageable. Also, it goes without saying, I think I used to say this a lot in last year's garden videos, but for anybody who's new, this is just how I garden, not how to garden. I welcome mistakes, I make mistakes, I get things wrong. That's how you learn. <laughs> So I'm sure people will be like, oh no, don't do that with your potatoes in the bag. But it's all about experimenting and having fun and seeing what works. So you're more than welcome to be a little experimental gardener like myself. Anyway, I will chat to you in the comments section. You know the drill, I'll leave the playlist for the cottage garden playlist. If anyone who is new, you wanna check it out, don't forget to hit subscribe. And my OGs, cheeky thumbs up, and I'll see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.